Omaha Nighthawks. All access. Presented by Mutual of Omaha. And welcome to Nighthawks All Access, brought to you by Mutual of Omaha. I'm your host, Travis Morgan. The Nighthawks are off this week, but we still have plenty to talk about. Did you know that one of Bo Pelini's best friends from high school is a coach for the Nighthawks? He's going to tell us all kinds of good stories about Bo tonight. Plus, we'll introduce you to a player that owns his own hair salon. We'll have that and much more tonight on Nighthawks All Access. First, let's see how the Nighthawks came from behind again last week against Hartford. Coach Jeff Jagosinski excited on the sideline because his team well, needs to get something going. He's down 7-0 and they respond. Jeff Garcia to DeVard Darling, the four-yard touchdown. We're all tied at seven. Fast forward to the fourth quarter. Hawks down 14-10. Jeff Wolfert, the former Mizzou kicker, splits it from 30 yards out, cuts the lead to one. Just under seven minutes to go now. Garcia doing it again to Hartford. To Jeb Putzier is tied in for the four-yard score. Omaha moves to three and one with a 19-14 win. Garcia earns Player of the Week honors again for the Nighthawks. Nighthawks tight ends coach Vince Marrow is a guy that played in some Super Bowls with the Bills and is one of Bo Pelini's best friends from high school. This guy has some stories. Let's hear him. All right, Vince, you played in two Super Bowls with the Buffalo Bills. That's got to be great. Unfortunately, you came up short, as we all know. What was it like being on those Bills teams that, you know, are, are so well known for not winning a Super Bowl? Right. Uh, you know, we get a lot of flack about, you know, losing four. In a row. In a row, yeah. <laughs> And actually, they could have went to six. Uh, they won a couple AFC championships and lost. But that was a special team. Uh, a lot of good guys on that team. Uh, we had a great head coach, Mar Levy. The front office, uh, I, I, people don't know, Butler was there. And uh, Polian, who's at Indianapolis now. And we just had a vision. And, uh, you know, we get jokes about losing them Super Bowls. But I looked at it as a special team and just a lot of good guys. And a lot of good guys is in the Hall of Fame now. So. To me, it was a blessing being on that team. What's it feel like to lose? You, just to get to the Super Bowl feels amazing. Everybody talks about that. But then to lose one, to get back and lose it again? Right. Uh, and it was against the same team. Uh, you know, the first one, you know, the guys actually didn't play that well. Hmm. But the second one in Atlanta, we actually thought we were going to win that one. And uh, guys played hard. Just a turnover here, just like at any level you play it, you get yeah. a turnover, game get away from you. So it was, it was, it was devastating, you know, but... Like, again, you never, I don't think you never see that again, a team go to four straight Super Bowls. Now, you started off college football in yes. at Toledo. Yes. And a little history here, your head coach was Nick Saban, and that yes. was his first job. Was he as nasty then as he is now? Uh, Nick, Coach Parham tuned down a little bit now. He was, you know, that was his first job. Uh -huh. So, you know, I think Nick was about 33. Uh, He's still, you know, I'm very close with Nick, so he's still the same coach. Still firing? Still in good shape, yeah, still demands a lot. But, you know, a lot of people have their opinion about him. But, you know, me personally, I think he's a great guy. Uh, he, his players love him, so, you know, and he makes sure his guys graduate. He wins. Yes. And that's, and that's also a big thing. Yes. You, can, you can say what you want about Nick Saban, but the guy wins. Exactly. And you sent your kid there to play for him, so obviously he must not be too bad of a guy, right? Right, because it came down, actually, you know, Bo Pelini is a good friend of mine, and it came down between, Nebraska, uh, Notre Dame, and Alabama, and Michael chose uh, Alabama. to kind of, you know, I, I kind of wanted him to go to Nebraska, but you know, so it was we. just a decision. <laughs> yeah, it was just a decision. But uh, yeah, he, he, I sent him there because I played for him. I have a lot of respect for Coach Saban. Uh, I graduated. He makes sure his guys graduate. He talked about Bo Pelini. He's your good friend. How did you guys know each other? Man, How I do mean, you guys know each uh, other? We we went to high school together. Uh, played high school basketball together. Football. Became very close. We real we, we talked, you know, pretty much probably about twice or sometimes, you know, with our schedules. But we talked probably once or twice a month. Uh, just talked to him another day. But we we very close. You know, played on a couple state championship teams. Uh, the guy that you see now is was the type of guy you seen back then. He was our quarterback. And in basketball, I'm the all-time leading scorer in basketball. He's second all-time leading scorer really? in school history. So yeah. Pelini's got game in the hoops then. He oh, can hoop yeah. it up? Oh, yeah. Bo was a all, I think he was an all-state basketball player. Very good basketball player. Wow, how about that? Yes. yes. All right, so now you, you make the transition from Toledo mm -hmm. to, to the NFL. Talk about your time in the NFL a little bit. You know. Nine be, years. Yeah, being in the NFL, it was, like I said, it's a blessing. And, uh, you know, coaching here in Omaha, you try to tell guys, like the guys I coach, tell them how to grind this, but how you got to stay in the league. Mm -hmm. And – you know, it was, I was fortunate to play for a Hall of Fame coach. And my first couple of years coming in here, we went straight to a couple of Super Bowls. So my stay there was great. 
and then I went to Carolina, and then I went to Chicago, and all my experience in the NFL was good. It was good. Now, you're with the Nighthawks now. Mm -hmm. Talk about the, the tight ends you, you get. I mean, Jeb, Jeb has been playing in the NFL. Yes. He's played in the NFL. So, I mean, you yes. guys have some guys with the NFL experience. Yes. What's it like coaching those guys at this level? Well, I have uh, Christian Hopkins, uh, Jeb Pitzer, and uh, Mike, uh, Mike Peterson, and uh, Lee Vickers. And Jeb has the most experience. You know, the thing about that, when you coach in pro ball, if you got some guys as veterans, you can kind of you, you, you teach them but let them still go the way they want to go. And, and then I got a young guy, and Christian Hopkins, who's our starter, he actually played at Toledo, a uh, big guy that can run. So it's been very interesting. But them guys, you know, they pull a lot of stuff. They joke about the Super Bowls, and they joke about, you know, when I played and all that. So <laughs> You're an easy target, though. Let's, yes. let's face it. Yes, yes. You're an easy target. Yes, yes. But when these guys, do they almost look at you a little bit differently as a coach because of the fact that, okay, here's a guy that's been to Super Bowls. He's played at the highest level. He knows what it takes to get there. He can give me the advice I need to get back to the NFL. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's the main thing is that when you go into a classroom and them guys got to know that, hey, you know what you're talking about. And them guys know that, hey, I mean, I can get out there and demonstrate what needs to be done. And, uh, you know, I, I love all four of them guys, they, they, especially Jeb. Jeb is a guy that I think should have the opportunity to go back to the NFL. He's, a, he's an explosive guy, good hands, and, you know, he'd be a good second or third tight end back in the NFL. So. It's, it's great working with them Well, guys. Vince, thanks for your time, and, and tell Bo I said hi. I will. <laughs> <laughs>
or you know just simple things like how to treat people right how to listen to your parents don't disrespect your parents so I'm very hands-on in the community and everywhere I've been Purdue Oakland Detroit even here whenever there's an opportunity to come talk to children or you know feed the homeless or whatever the case may be I'm always the first one in line to, to, to go uh, and get involved with it this next home game, which is, what's the date, 28th, I think it is, which is a Thursday. Um, we're gonna have a stand, but we're gonna have Stu Crew t-shirts. And all the money, 100% of the proceeds go to Stu's crew. Then after the game, we're gonna have a deal at um, the dugout, uh, DJ's dugout off of 114th and Dodge, where we're gonna have kind of a, a post-game party where people can come. I'm gonna have my family there. I'm gonna bring teammates. People can come, hang out with us. Just try to create awareness for, for my foundation because obviously the more proceeds that I can get, the more scholarships.